Um, my name is Sue Jackson, and I have ME-CFS. Both of my sons, 13 and 16, have it also. They've each been sick for seven years. Although my own life has been dramatically changed by living with this illness, um, today we want to fo focus mainly on our sons because pediatric ME-CFS is a much larger problem than most people realize. In addition to our own sons, we personally know seven other kids just in our local area who also have ME-CFS, plus several more who have all the symptoms but haven't been diagnosed yet. Um, I also write a blog about living with CFS, and every single week I receive emails from all over the country and all over the world from parents whose kids are completely disabled by this devastating illness. Our older son, Jamie, started showing symptoms of ME-CFS when he was eight years old. He missed 60 days of fifth grade that year. After some intense battles with teachers and administrators when he started middle school, we finally got agreement for him to take two classes with a homebound instructor and the other three required classes in school. He made it to those three classes at school about 60% of the time, with me driving him back and forth every day all day um, so that he could rest in between classes on the days he was able to make it at all. Our younger son, Craig, began showing symptoms of ME-CFS when he was just six years old in first grade, including frightening chest pains, which we hadn't seen before. When he missed 35 days of school in third grade, we realized that it was time to have him officially diagnosed as well. With the help of Dr. David Bell and Dr. Peter Rowe, working with our son's local pediatrician to treat orthostatic intolerance, both of our boys were very fortunate to be able to return to school. And although we are grateful for this treatment that allows them to live more normal lives, ME-CFS is still a significant part of our daily life. They go to bed at 8 p.m. most nights, even the 16-year-old. They still experience flare-up of symptoms if they do too much. A sleepover at a friend's house can result in several days spent lying on the couch, unable to get up. Jamie still misses between 25 and 35 days of school every year. They both take a lot of medication every day, and we know if we stop the medication, they'd become much sicker again. As my 16-year-old son said to me recently, this illness has ruined my life. I'm so far from being a normal teenager. My husband and I worry about their futures. Our older son will be college age in a year, but will he be able to leave home? Will he be able to hold down a full-time job after college? What if the medications don't work as well as they get older? What if their conditions get worse? We also worry about our ever-increasing medical costs, especially since I'm unable to contribute much to our income. All of these unknowns are frightening, but we know that we are the lucky ones because there are thousands of kids across the U.S. who are completely bedridden with CF, ME-CFS, who are unable to go to school at all. Living with ME-CFS is a constant struggle. We can't escape it even for a day because we can't escape our bodies or our limitations. It's always there, and we worry that it will always be there. When our children feel bad or can't do something, we feel helpless. And there's no worse feeling for a parent than feeling helpless. All of these kids are missing out on so much, parts of their lives they will never get back. Jamie, in particular, constantly feels the weight of his illness and is always trying to catch up from missed days of high school. All of our kids deserve more. They deserve solid scientific research and real treatment options that address the biological causes of this illness rather than just treating symptoms. After being completely healthy for 37 years, I got ME-CFS in 2002, and each of my sons became ill within a couple of years of that. We are living proof that this illness has both genetic and infectious components that need to be further investigated. Families like ours with more than one person who has ME-CFS are not uncommon, as was shown in the 2006 New Jersey CFIS Association study. Although research funding for ME-CFS in general is severely lacking, funding for pediatric ME-CFS is pretty much non-existent. 
there hasn't even been a complete and accurate population study done on children and teens. So please wrap up. We need the involvement and support of the CDC and the NIH in order to help the millions of Americans, including children and teens, who are disabled by MECFS and can't even find a knowledgeable doctor or an effective treatment, let alone a cure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for bringing your family.